The Frostbite Journals, an autobiographical series by Adam Snowflake. Journal 26, Digging My Own Grave. I'm tired. I'm tired and sad. Angelia, my partner, has been ghosting me, and I have a fear that they are going to stop associating with me soon. I don't know. I'm depressed. I wasn't before this new medication, but now on five plus something pills, I get depressed after I take it. I was doing so good with my depression, too. This medicine, it invokes the feeling so morbid within me. I'm reading Zombie and Frankenstein right now. I don't actually enjoy Zombie now that I'm thinking of it, but a review's a review. In my spare time, I have been reading Harry Potter and Uglies, as well as this really good quote of young adult story called The Kids Aren't Okay. I'm only on chapter four. It's a good story that deserves publication, but as I've learned via Julia Dunn's YouTube channel, Superhero UIA is a dead genre, hardly ever getting published. I successfully turned the Kingdom Diaries into a dystopian novel like I dreamed. I kind of have writer's block for it, but I'm pulling through. I'm missing a key piece of software from Mermaids vs. Zombies, but I'm sure I'll get that out way later. Mermaids vs. Zombies is a project of time. I'm probably going to have to hire somebody to dig through my code and clean it up later down the line. I sigh heavily. You think I'd be happy, but this sadness, this darkness of my heart, it is all but consuming. I'm depressed. Not suicidal, but... I am depressed, nothing special, just sad. I feel like a lot of beats in Manhara logic, my comic fall flat. I don't know, I sigh. <sighs> I'm running out of energy, and the sadness is getting worse. So I guess I'll cut this rant short. Thanks for listening, journal. You're all I have left. Dionysus Elric Gradiuki, 4-5-2020. Journal 27. Thanks for giving up on me. I realize how I come across... I am nothing but self-aware. I am someone tortured by abandonment, yet I phrase it as giving up on me. I feel the need to point this out because the self-deprecation is gaslighty and is manipulative. But this journal is also just me as an abuse survivor talking to myself and how I view everything. I released my song to those who gave up on me, Fairweather Friends. Link. It's a sad song. The main chorus goes... I have no friends, and good fucking riddance to the liars that said they'd be there when I fell. I feel like I don't take my music career very seriously. I just kind of jam. There's plenty of more talented people out there. I don't have a face for music. You've seen how ugly I appear. Just imagine that, but with shorter hair and bam. I don't know where I'm going. I just know I'm going to work on a whip for it, an animatic. I feel like those are cool types of YouTube videos that link by the time you read these words is probably unlisted. I finally made a music video for You're Never Coming Back, are you? And honestly, it reeks pathetic. In other news, I'm doing okay tonight. Not too bad, not too good. I talked with my god some, so I got that out of the way. Been trying, hashtag, to get back into magic, but that's a whole other issue for another day. I know some people are casting spells on me, but I know not much of it beyond that. I learned I've been pronouncing Dionysus' name wrong. Good for me, unable to pronounce my own name. But I relax. Just wanted to say something today. Been marathoning in Balado by the water parks trying to get into their music. They make good tunes. Anyways, that's all for now. Bye. Dionysius Elric Gradiuki, 4-7-20, am Journal 28, Gifted, by Gumi slash Athena P. So I wrote another song about Morgan. A part of me thinks that if I just wait patiently here enough, he'll come back to me. Sometimes I think it's crazy how much I obsess over him leaving me. He's a huge source of my abandonment issues. I can't pretend he's not. Even the mouse I used for my computer was lost at his house. I miss him. I completely and utterly miss him. Sometimes I think I've one-upped him on the transition scale, getting on hormones before him. I take pride in that. It's very petty. But completing other people who's hurt me dreams before they get the chance, that's a huge form of coping for me, however petty. It's like how I'll have my first comic before Robin has his. Robin, Latch, Richard, whatever he went by with his stupid Johnny Grimm story was a creative. But unlike me, he never got anything done. It takes a hell of time, but I do get things done. I do complete my projects. The base alpha for Lesbian Space Pirate Dating Simulator was a dark comedy and it fulfilled its purpose as that. But it was also terribly made with shitty grammar and game crashes. God, I spent so much time on that game. The remake will be better. Once we actually get to that remake, that is. I don't know. 
I'm tired and I'm bored and I'm aching to write the Kingdom Diaries as soon as I finish with this damn entry. I just wanted you to know, given my abandonment issues, that I am scarred. I remember once when my brother Jordan's wife, Kiss, as we'll call her, was manic. She got physical with him. I remember how scary it was. Now I look at myself suffering the same sorts of issues and go, yeah, no wonder everybody left. If I was as bad as her, why would they stay? I've been to a few places crazy that didn't kick me out. Battle Brew and Copper Coin. They let me stay as crazy as I was. I started wearing my trench coat everywhere out of delusions. Not because it was fashionable. I started wearing sunglasses every day because of delusions, not because they make me look stoic or cool. I guess I turned a lot of my trauma into my writing. I started a story called Driftwood Academy about Aaron Burr, my OC. Though in the book he has blue wavy hair and blue eyes and is black and race, I recently tongue-in-cheekly made how to meet Zone in my latest adventure on putting Zone in. Here's an excerpt from that story. Professor, I am worried about the rally. We're two towns over. There's no need for fear. But honestly, I fear the rally, Chalo said, clenching his fists tightly together. I shouldn't be afraid, yet I am. There's no trial that isn't of fear, Zone said somber, trying to make out the scenery under the changing lights. There's no trial in fear. A chubby man in a red suspender skirt sat next to the boys. And who would you be? The dark-skinned, wavy-haired man with blue features in his hair, colour, lipstick and eyes spoke. I'm Aaron Burr, the real one. It's only not to laugh. <laughs> and how was his impression of you? Spot on, if a bit manic. The man said, looking off to the side. He had a sudden stern way of speaking, very flamboyant. I hear you're from the town of London, quite far from this bar in Murdoch. The words were high-pitched and shallow. And I heard Driftwood Academy was a fairy tale, Zone murmured. Yes, Aaron Burr said, adjusting his necktie. It's what you've heard. He wore dark black sunglasses and unforeseen wraps, ace bandages around his neck, around his arms. I have a tip for you, he said. The mimes carry failure. His words were slow with a knowing grin. Zone looked spooked. And how do you know that is our current situation? You see the room of this party? Nothing's as it seems here. So I looked into you via my magical practice, and that is what rang true. Regarding knowledge you seem to need. His words were slow. Tell me, Zone, shouldn't you be off saving a planet or something? Your reputation precedes you. I have heard of you, Aaron Burr. I heard you were fired. I was let go by my own fruition, Aaron said, pushing up his pitch black sunglasses. Just letting you know, before you leave, seeing as you're getting antsy. Zone stopped shaking his leg. Chalo continued to stare at the floor deep in thought. The alt mimicry is coming back. Sontar will live. And like that, Amber gave a bow and walked away from the scenery. I like all my works to be connected through the Met, which is short for Meta. All my stories coexist in the same congruency, the same sphere of reality. I'm quite proud of this aspect. Sherlock Holmes has met Paybona. How? I don't know, but they've met. And Way has met every single one of my characters. I like to at this point remind you that I stole Ebony Darkness to Monsieur Ravenway. She's technically public domain because we don't know who wrote her, but I'm not going to risk it. I've talked to her via pop culture magic. The story was written poorly, but it wasn't a troll fic. She worked hard on it. I like to joke that she ghost made lesbian space pirate dating simulator. Lately, I found myself watching commentary YouTubers. The Right Opinion, The Illuminati, Mr. Epsion, who is very transphobic, or at least he was towards Milo Stewart and the like. I hate that kind of YouTuber. I'm the kind of person who likes everything, but with certain stuff, I'm very overly picky about it. For example, I don't believe, even though it penders to the lowest common denominator, that pop music, or really television, is inherently bad. I like Katy Perry's work and John Bellion, and I genuinely like Gene Simmons' Family Jewels in Shark Tank. Even when a genre is wholly trash, it doesn't mean I dislike it. You can always find some kind of jewel among the trash heap, you just have to know where to look. Likewise, I enjoy nonfiction stories. I'm just hella picky. I enjoy rap and hip hop, though I consider those pure art. I'm just ultra picky about the messages the rappers send, which is why I favor the likes of Watsky and Macklemore over others. I'm picky. I don't hate genres that aren't my main tea. I just hold them up to a higher level of scrutiny. <sighs> but yeah, I do genuinely hate the commentary community. The right opinion, Solar Sands, TJ Kirk, I hate them. I feel like a lot of the time they are bullies. So the fact that I found myself watching them again, 
I don't know, it just bothers me a bit. I like drama. I like tea, but I hate living through it myself, so normally I don't want to see it with others. You do keeps recommending shit to me, and I'm one of the whales, as they called, in the industry who's on YouTube constantly, so I guess I'm just letting the system manipulate my watch time. God, I have no life. My mom found a small hand sewing machine, and I really want to add that to my skill set, the ability to sew. I've mastered ventriloquism. I taught myself at a young age how to do it, and since I've been practicing again and now have a hidden talent. These past couple days, I've been struggling to figure out my YouTube content. I want to do some more cosplay stuff. I have this idea called Dinner with Ladybug, but I, while loving it, suck at cooking, so who knows how that will turn out. Anyways, I have stories to write, so see ya. Journal 29, Be Somebody, by Files and Thwip Crutch. I published, what? I'm a zombie? The musical. Overall, the book is formatted poorly. It's a thin piece, about 30-something pages, with a Creative Commons soundtrack to an otherwise public domain story. God, did I ever tell you that story? I used to be friends with a group, Rose, Will, and Dave, and me. The cast, Dave, the Marine, as Aiden Jack, Rose, the aspiring actress, as Josephine, Will, who had nothing better to do, as Johnny, then my alter Amanda did a review per Rose's request, and the group turned rabid. I lied and said it was my sister. I couldn't tell them I had alters, but it was enough for them to turn away from me, which in contrast was enough for me to give up on reviewing. I'm back because I've healed from other trauma. Whenever I gave a letter or note, it was always addressed to Dave the Marine, oldest in our group. David Quinn, one of the best actors I've ever met. I even made him a website back in the day. God, he never responded, though. Once upon a letter, Rose did. But then, when I got better, she left me again. I have no friends, and good fucking riddance, to the liars that said they'd be there when I fell, because I've fallen and they tossed me out, they said farewell. I remember how we laughed online, your flowers grew on my heart's vine, and you fell into the trap of a weak mind, you left me without a word most unkind, to those who gave up on me, my fair weather friends, banana boy. I wrote a song about her back in the dame, it's lost a time, she was one of my first real friends, they all were. I know they still talk to each other, but like a group, they exiled me. I should have never said yes to doing a review. I should have suppressed Amanda. If I had, I wouldn't be here right now. A friendless, messy nobody with a self-published public domain screenplay that nobody in their right mind gives two shits about. Maybe I could advertise it? Get it on Google AdSense and make an easy whip to link to the Lulu page where to buy it. I don't know. I hope somebody will do something with it. But even though I'm proud of it, I look at this screenplay reflecting on those who hurt me with disgust. I guess I struck first this time, leaving a review as Amanda, where we started to split back then, and lying about it being my sister. Maybe if I hadn't lied? Maybe if I never got into reviewing? I don't know. I'm lonely. Lately, I retexted Romeo Mutual on Twitter. I'm getting to know Aaron, a cosplayer who I met because he was a fan of Snow. Snow was there for my insanity, and I had delusions back then about everyone, including him. I guess Snow just didn't want to deal with it, but he always humored me and was nice to me. His best friend Cammy suffered the same issues, and then Cammy went mad, and after all that, still held my insanity against me. My dream bubble. This will only make sense if you've read my secret diary of a console get, but my favorite dream bubble is my birthday party, where I invited everyone from the con in costume. Snow was the only one to buy me a present. You said under five dollars. And it gave me powdered white donuts from a CVS quick trip place. Even Jake was there, who I just kept accidentally running into at the time. For a while, imposter entity system hopped with Snow, but I don't want to get into that here. All I need to know is that no matter their reputation, Snow the Salt Queen was there for me when I was sick. Then they deleted their account without a word, and I lost contact with them. Funny that. I finished a new song. It's called The Note. It's about Morgan being upset or confused that I never left him a suicide note. Like I said, I only ever wrote them to Dave. I never gave them to anybody else. When I was that low, he was always on my mind. Now Dave and I didn't have a special connection or anything, but he was always who I went to. Maybe because he was the only adult I knew. Maybe because he was a Marine? I don't know. I was never close with him, not really. 
I'm saying again, and I lost Moody over it. I lost Morgan over it. I lost Robin over it. Jimmy and I haven't chatted in ages, and I know as soon as O'Shea leaves, so will Jimmy and vice versa. O'Shea is no one special, just the one to play Casey in Mythforce. Jimmy is his friend, so we talk. He hooked us up for the project. I have this devastating fear that Mythforce episode 2 won't come out. Odin's actor, Roger's actor, they haven't responded. It's so hard to get a hold of Elisa's actress. Quetzalcoatl's actor is busy and so is Casey's. I worry it's going to be a one-episode deal that worries me, like, a lot. I finished, like I said earlier, Zachary in Wonderland. There's a point in the story that's pure madness, but it's from the Hatter's perspective, so I hope that it's decent. I got inking pens and a sketch pad from my mom. I want to learn watercolor. I want to learn a lot of things. Greek, ice skating, roller skating, archery. That's it. That's the list. I do archery, and I desperately need the targets to be closer so I can learn. They started me off on adult distance, and I just can't handle it. I know best how I learn. I need the targets slowly moved away over time. I go to Seven Ring Archery, but before that, I was a member of Kennesaw Archery Club. I never claimed to be good at archery. It's a fun pastime that I really suck at, but I'm working on it because it's fulfilling and because it's fun. My family is mostly ignoring the quarantine set up by many states and cities. We all went to the park for a hike the other day, and my mom is at her boyfriend's tonight. My sister has been hanging out with friends. The government is freaking out. The world is facing a virus again. I like to call the corona pandemic of 2020 the Black Plague, though orange would be more fit, because not only do I hate that color, but it is color of infection. I started making bookmarks, DIY ones you can print out from my website. There are nothing right now. But I know in the future they'll be great. All you need for DIY bookmarks is thick card stock, as normal people call it, printing paper, a good printer colored ink, and bam, grab your scissors and there you go. Before you ask, yes, this also works with business cards. I remember back when I was little, I was dating a boy named JC. JC was really into paper crafts as a special interest. We all knew he was autistic. Nobody knew I was. Though everybody I met knew I had something. Paper crafts, as he showed me, were construction ideas made from paper. It was really, really cool, but I was more of a letterboxing kind of kid. Letterboxing is essentially when you search for a hidden box with a stamp, and then you stamp the notebook and you find it through a publicly posted riddle. It's this weird thing that my riddle-obsessed childhood self cared a lot about. I wanted to be a letterboxer when I grew up, as though that was a feasible option. But look at me, I also daydreamed about becoming a great poet. Speaking of poetry, it's been a while since I've dabbled there. I'm currently working on a collection of poetry I aim to traditionally publish. The art you're looking at on this page is, is by Chua Beyond Deviant Art. It's my OC Raven. She's this thread that connects a lot of my stories together. She's holding within her hand merch that I actually sell, which is a Manhara book. I found Chua B through Deviant Art, which we've gone over before. I find artists on only three ways. Lemisaw Forums, I am an artist thread. DeviantArts, we're a paying project thread. And I used to have a good pixel website, but I lost it, so the rest is through credited fan art on Tumblr. I have a whole bookmark of people to commission when I can commission, and it sits idly on my computer. My desktop was supposed to come with 11 gigs of memory, but half of that was already full when we booted it up. And honestly, it's almost full now. I only have about five games on it, so honestly, that really surprises me. I was reading my dark dream stage play, and it honestly strikes me as not very good. I was watching this video by a YouTuber I don't personally know by the name of Leslie Rickman, who made a whole video on where to start with Neil Gaiman's work. Neil Gaiman is really the dream, I think. He does everything writing-wise that I wish I could do. He's prolific, as Leslie states. Everybody knows his work, even if they don't know him, and that's honestly what I want for myself. I'm less of a Gaiman, however, and more of a Lovecraft, not in the types of stories I tell, but more so how I choose to go about them. Making everything inherently public domain, focusing on subject matters that many would deem a dead genre, dystopia as of the writing here, doesn't sell. LGBT as of the writing here is a hard sell. I wrote a mixture of both with my recently finished The Kingdom Diaries towards the end. It just kept getting darker and darker and themes of revolution till it ends with Floris taking the King of Rohead's life. <sighs> I feel like I have to do a lot of research, but I want the next book to center around Patera Maud and her journey, being a hijabi against a polytheistic kingdom being what made the allies want to recruit her. I think it holds such great potential, and I really, really want to write it. Every time I ask my mom for something, she gets on me. My projects cost a lot of money, which we already struggle with, and none of them have proven to be lucrative. This week, you spend this much money, next week you'll ask for this! Paraphrased. 
never minding the fact that I'm also a cosplayer who takes literal years to string together my cosplays just on account of them being so expensive. Cosplay is an expensive-based hobby. Cosplay is when you, in character, pretend or dress up as a fictional character, normally from a comic, anime, book, or something of that nature. It's a geek's hobby. Normally, the people who get popular are thin white women doing sexy cosplays or ego-driven ones. I never understood cosplayers with egos because, honey, you lip-sync in costume. You're far from special. Cosplays can be bought or made, but there is disregard for cosplayers in the community who don't make it themselves. I have a whole series on my YouTube channel where I showcase how I make my cosplays called Creation Chamber, but so far I've received nothing from it. I know I'll make good content. I know my stuff is on par with a lot of the bigger YouTubers, but because I don't do clickbait, because I tag honestly, I feel like I'll never get to their level. That's the price of having integrity. Something about me you probably don't know is that I'm obsessed with coffee. I mean that, like, I drink over four cups a day. I just hate not drinking something without flavor. So I've come up with a comic idea called Coffee House, about personifications of coffee. You know, a slice of life sort of thing. I'm the kind of person who has a lot of ideas, but I think they need to be done in a certain way, so when it comes down to it, Coffee House may never be, but I definitely want to explore it in the future. Anyways, talk to you guys later. Sincerely, me. This has been the autobiographical The Frostbite Journals by Adam Snowflake.